Hello, welcome to the point from Navitin. In this screencast, we'll look at creating and formatting charts in Microsoft Excel 2010. Let's get started. You can see here that I've created a document with some random data in it. Uh, these are basically just numbers that I've entered in in different rows and columns. Here are some uh, letters that I've entered into some columns, and I'm actually going to add a few A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, and J. You, these are just letters that I've entered here, and I'll explain why they're there in a little while. But first things first, let's get to creating tables or charts. The first step is to just under the on the top of the Excel window, there are different uh, groupings. Choose the Insert tab. And then under the charts grouping, choose the type of chart you want to insert. In this example, I'm just going to use the first 2D column chart. Uh, when, it, when Excel creates the chart, usually it just sticks it right in the middle of the document, so you can just click and drag on that to move it where you want it. Once you've put the chart where you want it, you can actually, we have to actually generate the chart. And to do that, Excel needs to know what data you want to use. So if you go up here under data, choose select data. This is the screen where we actually choose what data will be graphed in the chart. So there's a couple of different, this is kind of a complicated window because it doesn't really explain well in words what everything is. You kind of are expected to know. So let me see if I can shed some light on that and make it a little less confusing. Uh, chart data range. This is where you choose what data you want to graph. This is one of the ways of choosing. And if you use the box up here under chart data range, uh, Excel will automatically try and guess what data is what. And it'll try to label your axes and label the data based on what you've selected. So it's kind of like an intelligent way of doing it. The second way to do it is manually by going down here and choosing the add button. And there are advantages to this way because you have very tight control over what's getting graphed. So I'll show both ways. Briefly I'll show the, the method using the automatic chart data range and then we'll jump into the manual adding of the data. So first things first, to select which data you want, you want to click in this box and then choose this button here. This button basically means whenever you see this button in this chart tool it means I want to choose the cells by clicking and dragging a box around them. So you click that now you can click and drag a box around the cells you want to graph and just choose this button here and you can see that each of the values have been graphed the 24 value here is shown here the second value 91 is shown here somewhere between 80 and 100 the thir third value a 63 is shown at 63 so you can see it's just de uh, graphing verbatim what I've selected however because of the smart chart data range tool didn't detect any in the selection that I selected didn't detect any labels or the name of the data it simply called the data series 1 which is kind of a random name that they call data and down here they've labeled the axes or the they've labeled the different uh, bars just using 1 through 14 because there were 14 different values that I had selected so it's kind of just generating this stuff almost um, with no ask, without asking the user. So let me show you how to manually create, uh, change the title and create uh, labels for your bars. So the first thing that you want to do, first thing I want to do is get rid of this uh, chart that I've created. And uh, I'm going to go back into the select data screen and redo this from the manual perspective. So in order to manually add data, you go back, to, obviously, back to the Select Data Source screen, and you're going to go to this Add button here. Now, when you're adding the legend series, that's basically meaning the data. This is going to be what's graphed in the different bars. So, here under Series Name, this is what Excel had previously called Series One. I'm going to call this series, let's just say, Financial Data, and then whoops, I misspelled that, financial data. And now, down here under series values, this is what actual data is going to be graphed. So I want to delete that, clear it out. Again, use this button here to say, tell Excel that I want to select the data manually. And then I'm going to choose these cells again. 
and click this button to grab the data. You can see again, Excel has is still wanting to label my uh, bars just using numbers, but it has renamed everything to financial data. So we're getting there. Click OK here. Now this under horizontal, and then press it says category access labels. This is where you can choose the cells that contain the labels of your different bars. So choose edit. Again, we want to select the cells manually and then just choose those those labels that you've created for each bar. Again, choose this button and click OK. You can see that my bars have now been labeled using the labels that have been shown here. So if I were to, for example, change this to test, bam, my label has changed here to test. So that explains kind of briefly the difference between the automatic uh, let me see if I can show you again. Between the chart data range, which automatically generates things or attempts to, and manually creating your legend entries and your horizontal axis labels. So with that, we reach the conclusion of the creating charts section of this screencast. And now we're just going to briefly look at formatting your charts. Basically, every element within this chart, you can double click and format. For example, I can double click one of the bars like so and now I can format each of these say I want to change the fill color to no fill and close that you can see my bars have disappeared because they have no color anymore so I want to fix that by double clicking one again go back to fill and let's do a gradient fill and that looks really nice so uh, basically you can repeat that for any of these different elements you can re edit your labels you can double click something like this you can see it says financial data here and financial data here. So what I'll do is I'll just click this and press delete on my keyboard. And now I have my financial data complete with my edited uh, bar labels and data. So I'll just rename a couple more of these. We'll say quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four. And you can see that's been changed on the chart as well. The reason why my chart values keep changing every time I rename something is that I've actually created these numbers <coughs> to be random numbers. So every time that I make a change it actually generates a new random number. So that's why my chart keeps changing. But if you had <coughs> actual financial data it would remain the same regardless of your changes. With that we reach the conclusion of this uh, screencast. You can watch previous issues or subscribe to receive the point via email on our website. The link is below. Have a great week.